Stay tuned for the latest edition of The Wisdom of Solomon, another gem from King Solomon's Mind brought to you by The Fuel Mule. Save 10% every time you fill up. Tonight, how low can you go? Huh. Want to talk? So let's talk. How low can you go? Well, this is September the 7th or 8th, or whatever date it is you're looking at this. And we have to think of 911, September the 11th, when our country was attacked by Muslim maniacs and 3,000 Americans died. Well, isn't it maybe uh, paradoxical that they just announced the conviction of some Muslims that are Brits? These guys decided, now listen to this, that they would take on liquids onto planes, mix those liquids, and create a bomb, and then blow the planes up with innocent people. They, they wanted to kill 10,000 people. And listen to this. They wanted to kill their own families. They were taking their families with them. Now, I'm not sure what makes a Muslim moron a Muslim moron, but I would guess it's the fact that they're dumber than a box of rocks. I would guess it's the fact that they buy baloney. I guess it's the fact that they actually believe silliness. It may even be the fact that they're retarded. But whatever the case is, these three guys uh, were found guilty of a conspiracy to murder thousands of passengers and crew and their own families in an unprecedented airline bomb plot that would, have been pro that would have proved more deadly even than 911. This was a retrial. They'd been tried once. Jurors found the leader, Abdullah Ahmed Ali, and two other men, Assad Sarwar and Tanver Hussein, guilty of plotting to use these bombs. Another guy, Umar Islam, was found guilty of a more general charge of conspiracy to murder. And three other men, Arafat Khan, Ibrahim Savant, and Wahid Zaman, were found not guilty of conspiracy to blow up the aircraft, but could face a retrial on conspiracy to murder. And then there were a couple others they threw in, one a convert that was with the group. Now, I want to ask you a question. The thought of killing one person, for most people, is an incredible thought. They would have to be incredibly emotional or mad or in a unique situation to think of taking a human life. But you have an entire culture, over one and what, one and a half billion Muslims, who are taught from the crib on that to kill non-believers is a good thing, is a way to get to heaven, is a way to get rewarded, is a way to become a martyr, is a way to, 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 to be thought well of by the other Muslims. There's something wrong with that. There's something sick about that. There's something disgusting about that. And I have a suggestion for which some people will object, but that's your, that's your right. I say we take an extremist Muslim environment like, oh, I don't know, the uh, capital of Sudan, Khartoum, or the capital of Syria, Damascus, or the capital of Gaza, Gaza City, or the capital of... I don't know, pick one, of some extremist uh, Muslim group that has exhibited and, and, and underwritten and promoted this kind of activity, and we give them what they dream of, martyrdom. We drop a few liberals into their midst, and after they kill them, which they most assuredly would do, then we kill them all. What do you think? Can we get a merit badge for martyrdom if we do that? Now, I know you're saying, Stan, how can you? I'm just trying to think like them. I'm just trying to emulate their better qualities. I'm just trying to assist people 
working hard to become martyrs and to go to, what, what do they call heaven in the Muslim faith? Oh, I know. With they all the virgins? It, well, that's what they get. Is seven, they don't know the virgins all look like Janet Reno and Donna Shalala. But, but the fact is... Yeah, but there's like a ton of them, right? Uh, yeah, that's what for. <laughs> but at any rate, the, the, the bottom line is that they are brought up by their own admission and with great pride. Where are the Wanabias? Oh, they're in Riyadh. All right, there's a good city. We could use that city. Our so-called friends. I love my family. And I respect that everyone else loves theirs. But if your job, if your dream, if your focus is on killing my family, then I absolutely want to kill you first. End of story. And if all one and a half billion Muslims say, and not all of them do by any stretch, that they want to kill me and mine, then I'm for killing them and theirs. How can you argue? How can you? How can you not remember 911 and know what the Muslim faith teaches? And what not all, but many Muslims buy into it. I don't mean it's a hundred or a thousand, it's tens of millions or hundreds of millions that dance in the street and celebrate the death of Americans. You want to dance? I'll get you a partner. We call it a, a hydrogen bomb or a nuclear bomb or whatever other kind of bomb necessary so you can dance all the way to eternity. One-way ticket, by the way. One-way ticket. A next detective in England was indicted and uh, lost his job because he couldn't wait to uh, take advantage of a 50-year-old girl uh, that he was overseeing in his, his job as a police officer. Now, I don't know this guy. I don't want to know this guy. He's going to go to jail, and then he'll become the 15-year-old to the other thugs that are in there. But when you have a police officer, and I respect the police, and I, I, I think police do an incredible amount of good, but when you have a bad police officer, that officer should be held to a higher standard because they've accepted the, the honor and the authority of being a police officer. And so for this guy who's been found guilty of trying to, I don't know what term they used. There was a term they used. Uh, what was it they said? Oh, he, he was trying to. They said grooming. Grow. I'm not sure what that term in Britain means, but I'm assuming it's not a positive thing. I assume it's trying to seduce and trying to orient her to do things for him, if a police officer crosses the line, that's as low as you can go. How low can you go? 